YouTubers are friends with him anymore. I don't know. I just again I don't ever I don't ever fucking condone like when people make fun of his wife or shit like that like that's whack to me honestly like, <laughs> you know, I, I honestly like I just it's not that fucking deep it doesn't need to be that deep it's like a war zone and it just doesn't have to be there's there's enough going on yeah. in the world like really again not to be breachy but it's like all of our fucking all of our um, issues with each other pale in comparison to what the fuck's but really going here's on the, here's the thing like I, I understand his wife would like, you know, Jerusalem and all that stuff. That's horrible stuff. But when it comes to like poking fun and making jokes, right, we're talking about people who have a career based built on making fun and, 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 and roasting people, yeah. right? Like making jokes about people, making fun of people, bullying people, right? That is 2016, 2017 YouTube. And that was 2016, 2017 H3H3. So it's like when that stuff, I don't care about that stuff. In fact, Leafy, the, Rice Gum, H3, The I-dubs. biggest f- uh, breath of fresh air today. And it was, it was absolutely amazing. It just, this is going to sound so stupid, but it made me feel so good. tweeted out he's like showing that he had a two out of ten video he had a re- a good good video that like popped off and he's like yeah we're crushing it and somebody responded to him and said yeah it's because all of your other videos suck that's why this one is two out of ten <laughs> he fucking responds by saying your mom sucks and i was so proud of that stupid little tweet that vic star said that your mom sucks right because nobody does that anymore yeah. Like, there's no fun on the internet anymore. Like, the fact that he was talking shit to this fan, it was like, I'm going to buy some fucking Vicstar merch. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's getting it's getting really, like, walking on eggshells, and everyone's a little too careful. It's just fake, man. It's so fake. And it's all based on, like, this virtue signaling, like, I want everyone to think I'm a good guy. Yeah. A lot of these things, dude, 99% of these things doesn't make you a bad person. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Even messing up and like misspeaking and taking it a little too far doesn't make you a bad person. It just yeah. means you messed up. That's all. That's that's all. As long as you're not fucking hurting people, like really fucking seriously hurting people. Dude, these TikTokers are apologizing every day. <clears throat> About nothing. About nothing. That's, but that's where it will go. That's where it's at. Yeah, that's where right it now. will go. Char- that's where it's at. Dixie, Dixie gagged because there was a fucking cooked snail on her plate and she fucking had to apologize for it you know what i'm saying like what what is going on what did she's getting canceled over that shit it, to the other youtubers that listen to the show or tiktokers or whoever don't apologize just don't apologize unless you can apologize about things you're actually sorry for don't apologize for the to, to, to make the mob go crazy away crazy shit yeah you throw away a pair of shoes and people don't like that because somebody out there could have used that pair of shoes and i'm sorry <laughs> i should have thought about that i should have donated it somewhere like Yo, you know what i mean like, listen to this you don't need to do a sit down video about shit last like that. night i was like i want to take a vacation and on this two week or a month vacation i want to work a real job i want to go wor- be one of the runners at the amazon facilities you know what that is you have to like run around they tell you Fast okay as fuck boy yeah <laughs> yeah they tell you you have to get this product you run around you go and find that product and you throw it on the conveyor belt and there's a timer it goes do 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 it's like a video game like a, they were saying that this job is horrible and the people that work in these warehouses are treated horribly and it's like you know whatever uh but in my opinion that would be fun and so i tweeted yeah, maybe for a day well i want to yeah. do it so i tweeted out and uh someone responds they go dude you are a millionaire and you want to go and do this for fun these are the type of jobs that people depend to have their electricity on and have their freaking uh, you know pay their bills and pay their rent with and you want to just go do it for fun and take someone's job away and i was like i was thinking about like i almost was going to be like yeah i didn't think about it that way but then i was just like yeah dude i'm i'm going to i'm going to do it for fun <laughs> fuck you what's peasant. even what's even wrong with that i don't know what's wrong with wanting to go do, i mean people do things for fun that people make money because off of it all might the time. it might take someone else's my step job mom, away my stepmom likes to garden and plant fucking tomato plants and use her own tomato like that 
Is she yeah. fucking with the tomato industry? Is she fucking pr- too privileged to be doing shit like that for it's, fun? It's it's just manufactured. I'm offended. It's like literally like, yeah. oh, how can I how can I make an argument where I'm offended? Yeah, what like, you just said is is really the crux yeah. of all. It's just that's that's where we're moving. Yeah. On a lighter, more positive, <laughs> exciting note, why are you here, Keem? Why are you in LA? Why are you two feet in front of YouTube me? YouTube versus TikToker boxing event. There is a press conference tomorrow. Uh, dude, I'm excited. I'm hosting the thing with Michael Buffer. Sick. Like, dude, the legendary Michael You're Buffer. You're going to crush that. By the way, Michael Buffer does the intro to this show. He's like a legendary boxing announcer. He's the guy that says- He does door intro. Yeah, I, mom's I, basement. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I can say this. Like, what you if you say his line, you have to pay him money. Did you know that? Like, he has a copyright. I don't. I don't think he would. He would flex that on us. I would pay him. <laughs> How much is it? I don't know. But he he has a copyright on the phrase. But he's he's the guy that says, "Let's get ready to rumble." Yeah, yeah. yeah. So me and him are hosting this tomorrow. And dude, Austin McBroom. Versus Bryce Hall. That's going to be a good one. Taylor Holder versus Gibb. I mean, we just did a whole production about Jarvis versus Michael Lee. Michael Lee's a TikToker. I was just up there answering questions. They just did a whole thing. They interviewed a bunch of phase guys. We're all going to be down there for it. It's going to be cool. I hope the production's right. I I hope they don't fuck it up. Yeah. Well, there's just so many moving parts. And this YouTube boxing shit. Mm-hmm. Is so early, you know what I mean? It's like it leaves a lot of room for things to get fucked up. I just I hope it goes well. A lot of people put a lot of time into this. Yeah. These fucking kids, these kids don't have to do this. You know what I mean? They make a good living, fucking making TikToks, making YouTube videos, and they said, "Fuck it, all right, we'll train for the next few months and fucking take it serious." And it's that's a, a point that I wanted to bring up because, like, <clears throat> back in the day, like in the '90s and the early 2000s, they did this celebrity boxing bullshit. But none of them made any money, and yeah. the only celebrities that came out were D-list celebrities. Because it's, it's a platform. It's it's before you knew, you know, Brad Pitt as his roles that he played in the movies that he played. You know, you knew Britney Spears for the song. They didn't have Instagrams and fucking Twitters, and you didn't know them on a personal level. It's so much of a more intimate relationship you have with people on social media. I'm not going to lie. I think <clears throat> the reason why influencers are willing to jump in the ring is because they got more balls. Like those mainstream celebrities aren't trying to fucking go and catch a maybe, left hook. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> There's more of us too. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just spread further. I, but I, what I was referring to is the interest in the draw, like why people, why the fans are so interested in it all of a sudden. And I think it has to do with, and it comes with pros and cons. I think it's harder to be a quote unquote celebrity than it ever has been because oh, your yeah. life gets picked apart viciously well you have no control either like you get a a movie role or something that wasn't your idea (laughs) like someone had to literally hire you like you have no control and and all that people get is the final product in its perfect form you know what i mean and even then some of them bomb some people don't and you gotta pick your fucking battles and you You can't you can't have a social media you can't say anything because they're gonna cancel your ass that's what i'm saying they get it real bad but this shit is so intimate the pros that come along with that is that i feel like the reason why maybe a Brad Pitt t-shirt wouldn't sell as well as like a phase rug t-shirt. It's just because if you're a fan of phase rug, you know, his mom's name, you know, her favorite fucking color, you know, yep. his do- what his dogs like to do. You, you're, you're part of his fucking, you're part of his life. Uh, I'm glad you brought up a rug. You know, one fight that I really, really want to see is Tanner Fox versus and rug. rug yeah. yeah. I think they wanted to do it for a while. Cause they're two really, really nice kids. Yeah. They got a similar build. Like uh, they have similar kind of content. Their, their crossover is huge. They've been making content together for a while. I think they wanted to, I'm, I'm guessing they've tried just the, I don't think the bags. Yeah, right. the bag wasn't right for rug because they both make a fucking shit ton of money. But Tanner Fox is boxing. He's boxing a, a TikToker and oh, is he? His name is on Escape. this card. Yeah. Wait, what? I yeah. missed that. Yeah. I didn't see that. Yeah. Is that new or no? It's been it's been there from the beginning. From it's the just beginning? the thing is, there's so many people. It's hard to remember. Like yeah. the guy that Tanner Fox <laughs> is actually boxing, which. I better know this by tomorrow, but right now, as I say here, I can't tell you. Yeah. Yeah. It's escaping me. We're not as tapped into the TikTok scene as I'm as really not. Maybe some of our younger listeners are. I'm really not. I got a whole speech planned for like how I open up the show. Can you give us a little a uh, little sneak peek? <clears throat> okay, here we go. <laughs> I, I don't have it. Us? I don't have it written down. Oh, it's just, just in my know. head. But here yeah. we go. <clears throat> YouTube, online entertainment, is about trends. You know, you either find a trend or you start a trend. But once you have that trend, you got to capitalize on it. 
back in 2017, Joe Weller and Theo Baker, they decided for a video idea that they would go and have a boxing match. They get in the ring. Joe Weller wins. They upload it to YouTube. Seven million views. Joe Weller knew right in that moment that he just started a trend and he had to capitalize it. That's what you do when you find a trend like that. So he calls out the biggest UK influencer he knows, KSI. And believe it or not, KSI agrees. Now, everyone knows Joe Weller is going to win. KSI is a gamer. He's a comedian. He's a little overweight. Joe Weller is an athlete. This kid has pipes and we just watched him beat up Theo Baker. So this is a done deal. But we go to the press conference, like the press conference we're having today. And at the press conference, we found out that things were a little different because when JJ shows up, KSI, and he lifts up his shirt, he has a six pack. And in that moment, we knew that he was going to take this serious. The match happens. KSI wins. And you know the story from here. KSI calls out the Pauls. And, you know, the first event is all influencers. It's amazing. But then, you know, the fights after that get mixed in with real boxing. And then we only have one real influencer uh, match. But tonight we're going to pay homage to that UK YouTube that started this by having people like Gib, having people like Deji, having FaZe Jarvis on the card, but also a card with all influencers back to our roots. Ladies and gentlemen, it's starting. YouTubers versus TikTokers. Let's, Let's go! go! Yo, that was good, Keith. That was good. Yeah. That was really good. You, yo, you, you killed that. Wow. That's my opening line. not reading off any? That was really good. Yo, you got to try to copy and paste what you just said. That was fucking awesome. And I want to I wanna watch it right yo, now. Just Tomorrow, guys. Hey, wait, this gets uploaded. Actually, the, the press conference will have already happened. Happened by the time this we're comes out. this Monday. Press conference is Tuesday. But That's all I'm saying is if I look horrible, if I get like nervous doing the press conference and I mess it all up, I just want people to know that I nailed it on mom's basement. He, he did. And listen, he's not in Buffalo right now. He's right in front of me. That was off the top. You fucking killed that. That was great. Uh, and it was it perfectly described the history of this. For anybody that was yeah. curious as to where this all came from, yeah. facts. And you're right about the YouTube trends. I mean, that's just how that's how this stuff is built. That's that's what it is. It's um, crazy how big it. But Theo, Theo getting in the ring with Joe Weller. And for a YouTube video, like they weren't trying to be boxers. This was a fucking YouTube video. Yeah. That moment right there has set up Logan Paul to be fighting fucking Floyd Mayweather. Without that, this doesn't happen. No, it's, it's insane. Yep, it's true. It's true. It's fucking crazy. And yeah. it's so interesting to think and like, look, you know what I mean? Look back and and take note. Like, wow. Something as simple as Joe Weller making a YouTube video changed the course of YouTube history yeah. and changed the course of even someone like Logan Paul's career. It's fucking crazy. And you have to give them credit for that because that is the case. That is how that all went down. Yep. That is how it happened. UK YouTube. I mean, YouTube boxing owes everything to UK YouTube. Yeah, no, it's true. Yeah. It is. And like you said, we got fucking Jarvis on the card, Deji on the card, Gib. It's cool. It's cool. We got some of those big UK names and um, it's pure. It's a pure influencer, amateur boxing event. It's a shame that KSI is not like active right now because the Pauls have taken over boxing, you know? Yeah, no, it's true. I but mean, this... hey, but they put in the work and that's the way they went. KSI, I think, I think, I think KSI wanted to, you know what I mean? Make a fucking statement. He wanted to go in. I think he accomplished exactly what he wanted in it. And I was just doing what he loves to do, which is he loves music. He He's just, always loved music. He just told Jake on Instagram <laughs> that Jake can wave at him when he's playing at Coachella. KSI. I don't know if this is true or not. I don't know if he's just talking shit. I guarantee it's true. It's KSI true. is going to be playing at Coachella. Yes, That's fucking, fucking insane. Youngblood. And yeah, no, it's definitely, it's definitely the case. I would bet my money on it. KSI doesn't say shit like that if it's not true. Yeah. So I'm sure KSI will be performing. But dude, that's where we're at in 2021. Yep. Uh, we spent a lot of time on this show talking about like the fucking, the bad things that have come with There's with so time. much good stuff. There's yeah. so much good stuff. Yeah. I mean, we got, like, like you said, Logan Paul boxing Floyd Mayweather, KSI playing at Coachella. What the fuck? Yep. YouTubers. And it takes me back to my earliest days of YouTube, my first ever video. When we that I knew this, when me and you yeah. knew this, and no one else knew it, yeah. right? Yeah, no, it's there cool. were so many times I could have quit, and so many times I could have just fucked off, you know. And For a long time, I, I don't know about you, but I didn't make like a substantial amount of money. Yep. I just believed in the space, and I was told from just about fucking everybody, my parents, my fucking friends. 
that I was fucking insane. YouTube videos, bro. 2010. What are you talking about? I didn't just believe in that this would be a success. I was delusional about the success. Dude, when I got my first uh, Machinima contract, right? Machinima was like the only place where you could upload gaming content. I I forget because me and you know this so well. I forget that no one listening actually knows this. But when you had gaming content back in the day, you couldn't get partnered on YouTube. You couldn't get paid. You had to. Because at the end of the day, the video games are owned by somebody and you can't. Right. now at this stage gaming in general has kind of accepted the fact that everybody's fair everything's fair use you guys can play our games can be played on youtube twitch things like that but for a second some developers didn't know if they were going to fight it or what because if you think about it if you play like a like a story a story mode game right where it's the same fucking game for everybody and you post that on youtube does it ruin is it like rebroadcasting a fucking a fucking movie yeah maybe maybe not kind of but now in 2021 you know what i mean but before like you were saying machinima was the only way so anyhow machinima hits me up and they send me an email and this is only three months after youtube i got a machinima like contract to be a director and upload over there and actually make money i was so delusional about this opportunity right that i thought that i was going to be on like jay leno or something <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, so I didn't only believe in it. I over believed in this well, now from day one. Past that. I mean, I would argue fighting Floyd Mayweather in a, on a professional boxing card is way past that. Think about how fucking long ago that was. Jay Leno isn't even on fucking yeah, TV anymore. Yeah. Is he alive still? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I think he is. I no, think. Yeah, I've I seen him and Elon riding that fucking Tesla truck. Yo, can we talk about what Elon did with Bitcoin? Do you know about this? <laughs> yeah, I saw a little bit about oh, it. Oh my God. He basically just said it wasn't that great, right? Yeah, he... Elon like bought all the Bitcoin, a ton of Bitcoin. Uh, Tesla did his yeah, company 1%, did one percent of the company, a ton of it, right? And so Bitcoin goes through the roof, and then he started just like talking trash about Bitcoin, saying that it's like bad for the environment, which it is. If you produce a, a Bitcoin, you mine it, right? You need a lot of energy and fucking computers to actually make that Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it kind of goes against the whole Tesla <laughs> and electric cars. And yeah. you know, he was just bringing up that point that he was wrong and that, you know, Bitcoin costs a lot to make. And, you know, he's not really for Bitcoin anymore. Bit- Bitcoin tanked. Elon has so much fucking power, bro. It went down something like 20%. Yeah, that's fucked. <laughs> the whole fucking market went down. So now everyone that loved Elon is like hating on Elon. But then he announced. I just moved all my Bitcoin, all of it to ethereum in the last couple weeks too. i sold all my crypto all of it all of except it? for my xrp like right before really? this went down i'm the luckiest motherfucker alive <laughs> but <laughs> but um but then last and night no either i just did that because i'm so high on ethereum like in the long term i just last night elon tweeted that he didn't sell any of his bitcoin and then the market went the other way bro like, what the fuck? Did he intentionally crash the market and buy more Bitcoin? <laughs> I don't know. Elon is Elon uh, definitely has the fucking Elon has some serious influence. It's crazy. Mm. What's your opinion on all these shit coins like popping up and people promoting them and stuff at, at the early the early days, you know, like safe moon, you know, bonfire. Uh, I even recently just got into this yummy thing. I made a ton of money. Uh, yeah, I was all for it. And when I say the early days, I'm literally talking about like two weeks ago, yeah. three weeks ago, because <laughs> yeah. there's like a new coin yeah. every single yeah. day. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so I- I'm off that wave. I know I'm missing out on a lot of money, uh, but I feel like just like the H3H3 thing like this, these shit coins that are popping up every day. I feel like that's going somewhere bad. You know, yeah, I'm no, out. I, I agree too. I just think that uh, a lot of people's validity in the space is going to, is going to just tank. I feel like, listen guys, please. And really listen. And I'm even speaking for myself. I know somehow I've, uh, I've adopted like a small following of people who are looking at my like Instagram stories and looking at what I'm doing with my money Yep. and following the, my, the things that I'm doing. I'm even speaking in terms of myself and my own opinions, guys, if a tweet from fucking Jake Paul or anybody else is going to influence you purely to put your money somewhere, you got it all wrong. It's yep. not that's not how you should be investing your money. Do your own fucking research. If you're serious about this crypto shit, fucking do your homework and don't don't 
look to, to, to people who make YouTube videos for this shit. Because at the end of the day, it's one of two things. They're either, I get a lot of my advice from other people. Mm -hmm. I, I don't pretend like I know a fucking ton about this shit. All mm -hmm. like the crazy, like intricate fucking details of why this coin might be, you know, the next, the next thing to pop, whatever the fuck. I get a lot of my information based a lot of what I do off people who I believe to be a lot smarter than me. So either Here, way, it's going to be that or it's just going to be a play that they're trying to make for financial gain for themselves. You here, have to understand that. Here's my biggest problem. All right. I constantly am like, I am not a financial advisor. I'm a YouTuber. Don't take financial advice meme, from me. But at the same time, it's, it's, tr the, it's truth. the truth. But here's my biggest problem. Everything that I've tweeted about has went up. <laughs> there yeah. isn't a living, breathing person. And and because I, I tell people when I'm out too, like I'll, I'll get a profit and then I tell people I'm out. And by the way, that's my overall advice in crypto in general is get involved to get yourself involved because the trend for the most part for most of this shit is just going up. And the model that I follow is like, I'll get into something and wait till it doubles, then take my initial money out. out. That's so what I, I do can't too. lose. That's, what I do too. Yeah. That's exactly what I do too. I put $10,000 into something. The second it turns into 20, I take my initial Ten 10 out, out and yep. like, let it ride. Yep. That's, that's exactly how I do so it. So you too. can't lose. But I mean, my biggest problem is everything that I've talked about has went up. Uh, so now people are listening to every little thing I do. So I've, yeah, I've you put me through the fucking ringer on XRP. But, well, that guy. I hit. didn't lose money. I no. actually made money. But <laughs> I could have made a lot more, but I was just I had such a sour taste. Keemstar, I think in I think in January you said buy XRP. Buy it was at sixty five cents or something. It was something like that. Yeah. Around, let's just say fifty cents, just mm -hmm. for say. You're like I think it's gonna. I, I I have reason to believe I have a ton of money in in it too. And again, me and Keem are friends. He's not gonna fucking throw me a bone like that right. without being. You know what I mean? Being on the fucking tip too. It's like buy a bunch of XRP, put a bunch of money in it. It fucking, it was, you, you're like, it's going to, it fucking tanked. And I, when that happens to me, yeah. I ride it out. I'd rather lose $10,000 for those of you fucking, that don't, for than, those of you take my money out and lose five K. You know what I'm saying? I'm just letting that shit ride. For those of you that don't know, I tell him and I tell Fousey and a couple other people, right? A couple days later, the SEC files a lawsuit against ripple yeah and like because dude and the, that that lawsuit's going on and the whole thing tanked Tanks. it went down to 20 cents so you know what i did they delisted xrp they took it off yeah. you can't buy it anymore in america or whatever the last day that you could buy it i bought a million xrp <laughs> for like 20 cents yeah. or 25 cents or something like that XRP Why is XRP is now at one dollar and sixty cents, bro. It's so fucked up. I made so much money on so it, and the up. lawsuit's not over. I'm waiting for the end of the lawsuit because if they win, <laughs> if if Ripple XRP wins that lawsuit, I am projecting and again. I'm not a financial advisor, uh, but I'm projecting that it's going to go way up, right? Yeah, yeah. And no, no, it did. I I think I got out. I think I got in at around fifty cents. It took that crazy dive. Yep. I stayed in, kept my money where it was. I didn't buy the dip. It's like, man, fuck, I really don't know much about this. All I knew was you told me to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's it. Yeah. And um, I waited for it to climb back up to like 75 cents, 80 cents, made a little bit of money and just fucking I was out. But now, like you said, it's up to fucking 160. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? I can't, I can't <laughs> win with this fucking thing. You it's know, just... this journalist hit me up and he goes, hey, he goes, uh, I'm doing a story on influencers, you know, promoting cryptocurrencies. And since you're mentioned in the article, uh, would you like to make a statement? So we went through this dude's old tweets. You we have said Doge to the fucking moon, baby. Dude, no, this is, this, is what, this is what I found. I found that he said something homophobic in the past. And so I responded to him in the DMs. I go, hey, I'm doing a story on reporters saying homophobic tweets in the past. I would oh, like to this guy said some shit. Yeah, the uh, reporter, the reporter. So you were just fucking with him? So I was fucking with him. I'm like, I'm doing a story on it. And since you're mentioned, I would like a statement from you. He didn't respond. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing. How you... How are you going to call out anyone for talking about cryptocurrency when everybody is talking, talking about, about cryptocurrency. cryptocurrency? Everyone. That's the thing. I don't know a YouTuber that's not involved. Listen, the market is just going to figure itself out at this point. I, I think that it's fucking crazy. I think that there's a lot of fucking, a lot of new coins popping up. That's why I don't typically participate in that stuff. I'm yeah. trying to learn more about it because I want to make money at the end of the day too. I want to make the right decisions. And I think that some of them might be valid. Um, but at the end of the day, my fucking my a lot of my energy and a lot of my money is going toward Ethereum. Here's my prediction. And, and I could be wrong because I'm not a financial advisor. But throughout history, when we get to these periods in history where everybody's investing, like the 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 normal guy that's like a mechanic or whatever, yeah. he starts investing in stocks or whatever. 
throughout history, when we get to these time frames where everyone's investing, we see a massive crash. Yeah. And I think that's coming and it could be a year. It could be tomorrow. It could be 10 years, whatever. Right. At some point, it's going to go bad. A lot of people are going to lose. Uh, and that's why I'm getting scared of the shitcoin stuff that's popping up every yeah. day. And that's why I completely pulled everything out, except for my XRP. I'm not pulling it out. It does take away from everything else a little bit. I don't know, it's weird. But that's why you should just do your fucking research. It, Don't the, just throw your money at whatever. Well, the shit coins, the shit coins are like showing. Like I was in early with the with the safe moon. Like I really believed in it. People and, are making money on it too. Like dude, people uh, are making a lot. Port, of money. Portnoid uh, from Barstool. He just tweeted out that he's like <coughs> just bumped into safe moon. Right. Um, I I was into it earlier, but when I seen a new coin every single day, like a new coin that like uh, people are talking about every day, I'm like, this. There's no way you can't be. These are not all going to be winners. Every 90% of these are going to be losers, yeah. right? There is no freaking way. Especially like, long term. Listen, the shit coin model, obviously, up to this point is like this pump and dump shit. Like, and I think and I think there's going to be losers and there's going to be people that are salty and they're going to get burned so bad that they're never going to invest in cryptocurrency again. Yeah. Or they're going to take that money and put it into like Ethereum, you know, XRP, Which is, by the way, Bitcoin. The right, the right move, in my yeah. opinion. Those are the ones that long term... I believe in those long term. I think yeah. that Ethereum and Bitcoin will still be relevant and will be way, way higher than they are now in 10 years. I, I like the I liked everything about SafeMoon, but like all these other shit coins are like a, a clone of that. Yeah. But they're just doing different things. And it's like, OK, the, I, I, I'm out. I'm out. Like, I just I don't like this. So yeah. I don't know. It's weird. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Have we filmed an hour? Where where are we at? 61. 61. Wow, Damn. you're on, on the fucking button with that one. I guess we could wrap it up. We, we we covered a lot of ground. It's really cool that you're here. This was a this was definitely a special episode. We're literally in my basement. It's not mom's basement, but it's, it's so basement. weird that me and you are filming this show and we got a sound guy here. I got my manager sitting there and I've like kind of lost track that we were even doing a podcast. I thought we were just well, talking. Dude, when, we, when we originally did this with the fucking production and the table and everybody carved the thing. Yeah, that was fucking awesome. It's the last time we've done it. It's been like fucking two years, almost two years. Yeah, it's fucking yeah. crazy. But yeah, man, this was awesome. What should we do for it? Let's do a bag of money for the emoji this week. I, do you like the emoji? Yeah, I'm I love the emojis. It. I'm loving it. Um, so, so for the past two episodes, we've given you guys an emoji. We don't have any comments. There's no comments on Spotify. It's almost impossible for us to see your guys' feedback in real time for these. Um, so we ask that you guys tweet us, tweet me and Keemstar. And we ask that you guys use an emoji each week cor corresponding to the episode. This week's emoji will be a money bag. So tweet us money bag with your feedback about the episode so we can read your comments and your thoughts about the show. Awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, Next week, we got to have someone big on. We and do have someone big on. Do you know who it is? No. Who? Neither do I. Uh, no, no. But I, you know what I'm thinking for next week before we go? I'm thinking we should probably hit up our boy Ninja. He came back to Fortnite Let's He's, do it. Dude, a lot of times. Yo, real quick. I got Ludwig in the queue, too. He just got his second shot. I really want to talk to him. Uh, shit that we should get him dude, on. Dude, I love him. He's articulate. He's cool. I don't know. You guys maybe, yo, maybe drop what us some a names. Ninja. That's a diss at Ninja, man, because he beat him. Well, <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that it matters. What, Ninja, what they both did was historic. You know what I'm saying? They're both fucking awesome. All I'm saying is Ninja's com coming back to, like, Toxic Ninja. I love him. He was talking smack on the stream yo, recently. Let's, let's have him drop some fucking F-bombs and fucking go crazy. Dude, Ninja literally said on his creator code one month, he made five, five million dollars. So okay, we gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. Love you guys. See Money bag emoji on Twitter. See you next week. Sick. Bye.